So let's wrap up the show by talking about the playoff picture as things currently stand. Uh, Timo Riska, uh, PFF Moo on Twitter, has written an article about the statistical chance of all these guys making the playoffs, um, all those kinds of things. Um, I guess, what's your biggest takeaway from this article? So he's drawn up what the current standings look like, the top seven seeds in the AFC and the NFC. Then he's shown uh, what the chances of, the, of each team making the playoffs is before and after this coming weekend. So, you know, how much leverage essentially is on the line this week for a bunch of teams? Um, how much is at stake for all these sides? And then the various playoff scenarios in terms of who's got the most chance of winning the Super Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. So what was your big takeaway from this article? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, something that I was just shocked to see how much playoff swing we still have with these teams. Like the Vikings, yeah. we talk, just talking about them, they play the Packers this week. If they win, Timo Simulations has them at a 64% chance to make the playoffs. And with a loss, it goes down to like 32, which is kind of where you figure the Vikings would be. That's the number that, all right, much less than 50%, less than the coin flip odds to make the playoffs throughout. But if they win, it goes to 64. Like 64 is a high percentage to make the playoffs. Pittsburgh Steelers are the, 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 the exact same way to me. Steelers, uh, man, they started out of the gate really slow, didn't look good, and still at times just like haven't looked good. If they win this upcoming weekend, which the Steelers play, who do they play this weekend? Oh, they play the Jags. They jump all the way up to a 71% chance to make the playoffs. So those were the two big ones to me that stood out. They've got some of the biggest leverage and the biggest swing possibilities, but the fact that if they win, both of those teams are very convincingly above 50% to make the playoffs – uh, that was a that was an eye opener for me. I would not have thought that before reading this article. Yeah, the biggest sort of it's that image. The biggest takeaway for me was just how kind of chaotic the middle of the NFC is. Like half the conference has a massive chance of like still forcing their way into the playoff picture right, with just a right. win this weekend, let alone the next couple of weeks. And the Vikings are actually fascinating because with like the biggest games out of their out of the way already, and not necessarily wins from some of them. They have, in, with wins of three of the last four, managed to crawl their way back to the point where one win gives them essentially a two-thirds chance of making the playoffs. And when you look at their schedule now, like there's not a really good team on it that, as, as far as we understand them right now until Cincinnati week 15 and the Bengals might not be as good as we think they are by the time that rolls around. Detroit week 16 and then Detroit again week 18. But like... Green Bay is this week. You would expect them to win that. So if they win that, they're up into the 64% chance. The following week is Atlanta. I mean, they're okay. New Orleans, right. Denver, Chicago, Vegas. Like, that's their next run of teams mired in mediocrity. You, at this point, you'll be looking at that and saying, the Vikings should be forcing their way into the playoff picture. On the other side of things... I knew it wasn't like great for the Packers, but if the Packers win against the Vikings this week, their playoff chances only goes up to 38%. If they lose, it goes down to 12. Right. So they lose this week, and I, I know some Packers fans are basically already there at that point, but they lose this week, they're done. Like the season's over, essentially. Like you're just playing for roster spots next year. Yeah. Which then, is kind of wild. I didn't I didn't think the Packers were gonna be that good this year, but to essentially be eliminated seven weeks into the season or eight weeks into the season, um, I didn't I didn't expect it to look like that. And that's including a crazy comeback win that they had against the Saints that probably you know, you if you play that second half scenario with Green Bay and New Orleans out ten times, they probably don't come back to win that game nine out of ten times. I, so that could have been another loss for the Packers, and their their hopes could be near zero if they would have actually lost that game. Looking ahead to this weekend, I would argue that maybe the biggest game of the year in terms of leverage so far, in terms of stakes, what's on the line, is mm -hmm. Cincinnati playing San Francisco because it's not the biggest um, sort of spread in terms of playoff chance with a win or a loss, but if the Bengals lose – they go down sub tw sub 30% uh, in chances to make the playoffs. If they win, they stay alive and just get to 50-50. But, like, you know, a loss to San Francisco, 
who are still, I think, one of the best teams in the NFL, put Cincinnati absolutely with their backs against the wall with very little margin for error to, to make the playoffs again. And even winning the game only gets them to like a coin flip to make it. Like they have dug themselves such a deep hole with that start and with the Joe Burrow injury that they really have very little margin for error. And now the margin comes up against one of the better teams in the NFL, albeit one coming off a couple of losses. Yeah, looking at the numbers, that one is super interesting. I, I'm not... I wouldn't buy the panic as much as maybe the numbers would insinuate I should with the Bengals. Like if they drop it to the to the Niners, what's their schedule moving forward? It's Let's rough. See. That's the problem because they then face Buffalo the next game, Houston, they Baltimore, the, yeah, they Pittsburgh, the Jackson schedule moving forward. Right yeah, now. yeah, like that's that's why they're in in ro- they don't have any margin for error and they're facing a slate of nightmare teams. Yeah, no, I mean it gets tough for them. I still wouldn't be panicking at three and four if, I, if I'm the Bengals, even with the odds going down to uh, the thirties. But uh, obviously, this is a yeah, this is, this is a very huge week for them. Um, is there a team there that is not in the playoff picture right now that you think has the best chance of like jumping into that spot? Mm. So current picture, if it ended today, Kansas City, Miami, Baltimore. Jacksonville are the four division winners in the AFC, right. and then Pittsburgh, yeah. Cleveland, and Buffalo are the three wild card spots. Uh, the NFC: Philly, Detroit, San Francisco, Atlanta are the four division winners, and then Seattle, Dallas, and Tampa Bay would be the wild card spots. The one that I guess sticks out to me the most, which is crazy that I'm saying this, is the Rams. Oh, because if you look at this article. If the Rams win this week, which the Rams play, what do they play? They play the Cowboys in Dallas. So obviously, like this would be a big win if they get this win. Their playoff chances jumps to fifty percent. It's crazy. That's nuts. There's no way this team should have a fifty percent chance to make the playoffs when you look at the roster the way that they're constructed. So that's kind of the one to me where. They're playing teams a lot tougher than I thought that they were going to. This team is just scrapping this year and doing that very well with a lot of young guys, a lot of first-time guys, a lot of rookies. And Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, what they're doing on offense is sometimes been enough to get them more wins than I thought that they would have at this point in the season. So the Rams, I, I wouldn't call them like a legitimate playoff threat but they are in that conversation a lot more than I thought they were. And even if they don't make the playoffs, Rams could be the biggest spoiler team of any team in this in this league. Like we might look back on it of the teams that made the playoffs versus the teams that just missed the playoffs. And a couple of those teams that didn't make the playoffs, we might be able to point to their schedule and go, damn, that loss to the Rams. That got him. It, it made all the difference in the world. And I feel like there might be a couple of teams where we end up having that conversation with them. The last thing actually that jumped out to me in this article is just how wrapped up almost um, from an odds point of view, home field advantage is the number one seed for each conference. Like Kansas City is a 57% chance to have the number one seed in the AFC. And Philly is 47% chance in the NFC with San Francisco, the next best team at 22%. So in what we thought would be like a like bloodbath race for each number one seed in each conference it's actually looking like just the two Super Bowl teams are going to get back again so far I mean the worst odds is essentially a coin flip for Philly to have the number one seed Kansas City is seen as you know 57 percent Baltimore with 14 is the next highest in the AFC it's actually crazy that it looks like that it's just going to be that again yeah early wins they just put you in such a great situation going down the stretch to where uh, a lot of teams are going to be fighting it out behind you but is anybody really going to be able to catch your win total and i think that's where both of those teams are so yeah it is kind of crazy that it feels like it's almost wrapped up but it does feel like those teams are just going to be the number one seeds again